Hello everyone, and welcome to the finale of Full Grown Gaming's Let's Play of Kingdom Hearts. If we look in the pause menu, you will see that off camera, I got Sora, Donald, and Goofy to level 100, which is the max level in this game, and I even got Sora two more crystal crowns for his equipment slots. Didn't really have time or, you know, I guess motivation to get, you know, five or six more crystal crowns to fill out everybody else's equipment slots, but I don't think it's really that necessary because the upcoming boss fights are really not that hard. Nothing close to Sephiroth or Kurziza or the Phantom even. But if we go ahead and examine this door... Huh? What's wrong? Don't you hear something? There! I don't hear anything. Strange, that voice was so familiar. Maybe it's just my imagination. Maybe you'd better take a rest. So that little sequence of events right there is Donald's way, and I guess this door in the game's way, of telling us that this save spot is actually the final save spot in the entire game, and that once we go through that door, we can't come back to this side of the door. So if you have anything that you want to do before we go in the door, or before you go in the door, I guess, Make sure you do it before you go in this door. It's kind of like the door to Ganon's castle, or the door to Ganondorf in Ganon's castle. Once you go through it, the game is going to be completed, or you're going to die and have to restart, I guess. So let's go ahead and examine it and actually go through the door. There's probably going to be a short cutscene here, and like always, I definitely don't want to talk over these really important and pretty cool cutscenes. I have to give it to you, Sora, this does sort of look like your island. But if we look over here, the bridge is now gone. I always thought it was kind of funny how that bridge of all things disappears. I think other things disappear too, but I don't really exactly remember what they all are. But I think it's pretty obvious that this is not Destiny Islands. First of all, we can't even go into the door, into that shack area. You know, come to think of it, I don't know if I ever went in there. But on the real Destiny Islands at the beginning of the game, there's actually a save spot in there. And I guarantee we won't be able to go through this door. Unfortunately not. And Kyrie is not there, so we should probably infer that something is wrong. There is actually, speaking of things being wrong, there's a glitch that we can do here. And this is actually one of the only glitches that I know of in the entire game. And I don't know how anyone figured this out. And I already got it to work. I thought I was going to have to speed it up until I actually got it to work. But as you can see, there is some sort of invisible ledge there, and you can literally jump as high as you want to. Eventually, we will get to the top of the sky, and we will be in like a black void and be able to look down and see Destiny Islands. And there we go. We have officially surpassed the sky, and I don't know where we are. Maybe we're in gummy space, maybe we are in glitch world, I have no idea. But to get out of this, all you have to do is fall back down here. And there's not really any point to doing that, and I think you can actually mess some stuff up if you actually, or if you fall behind the world. I don't think you'll be able to get back onto the side, like if you fall on the other side of that wall over there. So don't go too far if you want to try that, but that, I thought that was always a pretty cool glitch. But to actually progress, if we want to stop messing around, if we come over here into where that secret cave was, we will set off a pretty cool cutscene, so I hope you guys enjoy. This world has been connected. What was that? Tied to the darkness. Soon to be completely eclipsed. There is so very much to learn. You understand so little. A meaningless effort. One who knows nothing can understand. So Destiny Islands, or whatever this place is anyway, has changed a little bit and has become a little bit more purple and destroyed, I guess. But to progress now, all we have to do is go talk to what appears to be Riku, but I'm sure we'll find out who it really is. 
Take a look at this tiny place. To the heart-seeking freedom, this island is a prison, surrounded by water. And so this boy sought out to escape from his prison. He sought a way to cross over into other worlds, and he opened his heart to darkness. Riku! Don't bother. Your voice can no longer reach him where he is. His heart belongs again to darkness. All worlds begin in darkness. And all so end. The heart is no different. Darkness sprouts within it. It grows, consumes it. Such is its nature. In the end, every heart returns to the darkness whence it came. You see, darkness is the heart's true essence. That's not true. The heart may be weak, and sometimes it may even give in. But I've learned that deep down, there's a light that never goes out. So you have come this far, and still you understand nothing. Every light must fade. Every heart return to darkness! So, Riku has officially been taken over by Ansem, and I kind of wanted to show you guys the Trinity technique. And one thing I don't really understand is why, like, I was practic practicing this fight before I started, you know, this episode, and for some reason my MP keeps getting healed, or, you know, replenished, even after I use the Trinity technique. Not entirely sure why, because I thought it was supposed to completely, you know, deplete itself, I guess when you use the trinity technique but every time i use it it just fills it back up and i'm not really sure what mechanism or maybe i have an ability equipped or something like that that keeps it from completely being drained i really have no idea i never have had that happen before but as far as the fight actually goes itself nothing too hard really pretty standard really and the only thing you really have to worry about i think are those attacks from the dark i guess that's dark side on his back it's kind of like a little mini version of dark side or whatever the only thing that makes this fight hard whatsoever to me is the fact that he flies around all over the place but especially at whatever level i am right now 100 actually i did show that right before this fight started it's really not a problem even though you'll be able to attack less or because he moves around so much you attack less often since we're a high level we do more damage per attack so it's really not that big of a deal and i think you might have to kill him with either a combo or a magic attack so keep that in mind Now Ansem has dug a little hole for himself over here in whatever this area we used to be. What was this? I guess it might have been the treehouse. Not entirely sure. Whoa, that was a really weird view of Goofy right there. But before you jump in there, you want to make sure you have all of your items equipped. And I should probably... I think this might actually be the final time you can even mess with your items. I think after this... I know there's going to be a lot of boss fights after this one that we're about to fight. I don't think there's ever going to be another opportunity as far as I remember, to fix up any of this stuff. So make sure before you jump in that hole right there that you have everything ready. But as of right now, I am ready, so let's go ahead and jump in here and fight another boss. Here guys, we have, pretty obviously, we have Dark Side yet again. And the thing is, I casted Aeraga right there, actually more of his, as an offensive attack. And you might think that's kind of weird to think of Aeraga as an offensive weapon, but it seems like the bosses we're going to be fighting here have some sort of weakness, almost, to the Aeraga ability. And as you guys will see, as soon as we get to the actual final boss, 
Aeroga, if you cast it on everybody at once, it does a whole lot of damage. And right here, I'm just going to try and take him out with Thunder, I guess. Because, uh, I was going to say, I don't think he's going to give me his hand for quite a few seconds here. I think I might as well finish him off the way I finished him off, you know, at the beginning of the game, with a smack to the face. And we're probably going to, I don't think, if I remember correctly, the cutscene between this fight and the next fight, I don't think there's really any talking or anything between it. And the next fight is Ansem, like, again. It's really the same sort of fight as the first fight, actually. But it is a little bit harder, he has some new techniques, and also we don't get Donald and Goofy, which makes it a tiny bit harder just because your damage output will be lower, and we also can't use the Trinity technique. And speaking of techniques, the Ragnarok ability and the... I don't really like the Strike Rate ability because it doesn't seem like it does that much damage, but the Ragnarok and the Arcanum abilities are useful, but at the same time, it is kind of hard to land those attacks, and that was really lucky. Don't really know what stopped him there. I don't think the Araga ability stops that attack, but apparently it does. But yeah, what I was saying was, the Arcanum abilities and the Ragnarok abilities are kind of hard to hit him with, or hit all of the combos or the attacks in the combo, because he moves around so much. And I didn't even notice he landed that attack on me. He can, like, implant Dark Side in you, and there's a, a time like now, when you try to attack, that he will freeze you. Your attack command will be frozen. And during that time, you can't attack at all. I think he's leaving me there. And he has... That's really... I was about to say, this attack right here is the only only other one that you really have to worry about. Now, you might think it was would be a good idea to glide around during this. I don't personally find the glide ability to really help here. I think the dodge roll is more helpful. Because if you glide around, eventually you're going to have to land. That's just part of the, the gliding ability. And this is what I was talking about right here, how the Ragnarok doesn't hit him exactly. But when you glide, you're eventually going to have to land. When you land, Darkseid is going to be ready right there to come up out of the ground and get you. But if you dodge roll, you're always going to have that advantage, that you're always going to be on the ground. And there's never going to be a point where you don't have to, or where you have to consider the fact that when you land, you're going to take damage. Because you'll always be ahead of Darkseid, if that really makes any sense at all. But what I was saying before, at the end of the... The time I first fought him, just a few minutes ago, I think you might have to beat him with a combo or a magic attack. Well, apparently not, but I could have sworn the first time I fought him that I attacked him and it didn't kill him, but when I used the Thundaga, it did. So we probably are going to be getting a few more substantial cutscenes here. Behold the Endless Abyss. Within it lies the heart of all worlds. Kingdom hearts! Look as hard as you are able. You'll not find even the smallest glimmer of light. From those dark depths are all hearts born. Even yours. <laughs> Darkness conquers all worlds! up already? Come on, Sora. I thought you were stronger than that. This, guys, is the official last boss of the game. But this part of the boss, or this boss in particular, in general, I should say, has a lot of different facets, a lot of different phases, a lot of different, you know, forms, I guess, and there's a whole lot of different parts to this fight. What I like to do, again, is cast Aragon on myself, because even if you just touch him, it does a whole lot of damage just if you touch him. So that, on top of constant attacking with Ultima Weapon, will bring down Ansem fairly quickly here. And that guy right behind him, or whatever that thing is, that blue thing back there, has always reminded me of Bahamut for some reason. I don't have a picture of Bahamut, and by the way, when I say Bahamut, I mean the one from Final Fantasy X, and not necessarily one from Final Fantasy VII. 
but I don't know why I don't really have a picture right here to compare the two. So it's going to be funny when I try and look after this episode. And it turns out the Bahamut from Final Fantasy X looks nothing like that. But we're just about to take him out again. Or not again, you know, for his first form right here without too much of a problem. I actually almost died there. But with that second chance ability, I really don't have too much of a fear of dying. And I should probably tell you the whole name of this fight. And this boss is actually called World of Chaos. After beating his first form, we get to glide into one of those darkness portals, or I, they have a name, but I don't really remember what they're called. And once we go in here, and you might notice that we still don't have Donald or Goofy. I don't know if I really talked about that too much, but I guess it is fairly obvious. There are a whole bunch of... what well, these are shadows, but later on we're going to get some tougher enemies once we fly into these holes. And now we get to fight, or you know, attack whatever this thing is. It really, and I, I keep making Ocarina of Time references, but that really does remind me of the, the things we had to attack that had the sages, like in each of the trials or whatever in Ganon's castle, that is exactly what those remind me of. Ansem is still recovering up there, and I'm going to go ahead and cast Aragog, but this is probably the easiest of all of the phases. All you have to do is attack these little tentacle things, and these are dying in one hit, guys. So I guess it would be a little bit harder if I didn't have Ultima Weapon and I weren't level 100, but even so, they are dying in one hit. And I don't know what the threshold for that is as far as being able to kill in one hit, but I imagine that you wouldn't even have to be near level 100. But once we go in here, the Portal of Darkness is apparently what these are called. And I like how I'm just able to sit right here and nothing happens. But I believe we'll get Goofy back, and yes we do. Now this time we actually have to fight Dark Balls. And for some reason, speaking of, you know, one hit kills, it doesn't appear that I am killing these Dark Balls in one hit. So these Dark Balls are stronger than any other Dark Balls in the entire game actually. Because if you guys remember, when I did what I called the Gauntlet back in the room before Final Rest in... In the world, I almost said Hollow Bastion. I was killing those Dark Balls in one hit, and I was only like level 70-something. So I'm not entirely sure if, how much stronger these guys are than the ones we fought then. But to some extent, they are stronger for sure. And that should be the last of them there. And there we go. And I'm not sure if there's... I don't think there's going to be a cutscene, but when we get these panouts where they show World of Chaos all at once, I do like to be kind of quiet because it is sort of an epic moment. This time, we actually have to attack the mouth in the front, and the mouth is it pretty... It looks pretty intimidating, I should say. It's not hard at all. You can literally just sit here and attack over and over and over with no, you know, consequence for doing so. Even though it looks like those attacks are doing quite a bit of damage, even at low levels, those don't really do anything, and the head here doesn't really do much damage to you either, as far as I remember. And like I said, if you cast Eraga on each of the characters in your party, these guys will go down fairly quickly indeed. Now, the Portal to Darkness is going to appear in this guy's mouth. I should probably cure my... Okay, never mind. But the Portal to Darkness appears in his mouth. The funny thing is, my brothers and I have always had a hard time flying into this one. I, apparently, I had no problem there. For some reason, it seems like when you try and fly into that one, it always pushes you off to one side or another. So be careful. If you're low on health, I would try and heal before fumbling around trying to go into that mouth or whatever. But in this area, we're not fighting Dark Balls. We're not fighting Shadows. We are actually fighting... Am I really going to forget what they're called? Are they called Invisibles? I, I hope that's what they're called. Is that going to be it already? Apparently it is. So even though they give us harder enemies, they give us, you know, a smaller amount of them. So I guess that's a pretty good balancing technique there.
Now, if you look at the gore on the front of this right here, I don't know why, but that always has reminded me of the Dragon Ball Z gore. How it's not exactly gory, but they, they're they trying to show you that something really bad happened to whoever got hit. And the only one that I can really think of is where Raditz got hit by Piccolo's special beam cannon in like one of the first episodes. I know, I, I actually I don't know if you guys are really fans of Dragon Ball Z, but that used to be my show back in the day. And I didn't even have time to introduce this part of the fight. That part is probably the easiest. All you have to do is attack that blob thing in the middle, and it will go down fairly quickly. This, guys, is the final segment of this fight, and it is time to see how effective my Araga strategy is. If you guys didn't know, by the way, as soon as you press, if you're locked onto something and you hit triangle, Donald and Goofy will fly or run towards it or whatever and get right up next to it. So if you use that property and attack with Araga, it goes down extremely quickly. And as you guys can see, he's almost already down on his, he is now, down on his last life bar, and I guarantee that didn't take more than about 10 seconds. Now, whatever he's doing right here is preventing me from getting close, but that is over, and it is about to be officially entirely over, guys. That is the final boss in the entire game. I can't believe that we finally got here, but we are going to have a lot of cutscenes here, guys, and I will pick everything back up in the credits. You guys know how I like to give a review in the credits, but I want you guys to really enjoy these cutscenes because they are some of the best in the entire game. Sora, together we could do it. Okay. King Mickey. Now, 
They're coming. Donald? Luffy? Thank you. Take care of her. you said before I'm always with you too I'll come back to you I promise I think it's pretty obvious why this is one of my favorite games of all time, and I know I'm not alone on that. Every time I see that part of the cutscene where Kairi sees that Sora had drawn the Paupu fruit, and she draws it on there as well, instant, almost, not really, because obviously not right now, tears. I mean, it's one of the only things I can think, I like never cry at anything, no movies really, no books, 
The only other time I can think of is like the first time I saw the Eris death scene, but that one right there, just the emotion of that cutscene is really one of the highest ones I can, I can think of in all of gaming. But as far as what I think of this game, I'm not even sure if I need to go through everything, just because everything about this game is pretty much gold. I mean, the plot line, there's no... It's not, like, perfect, I guess, but it is one of the most intriguing that I think I've ever played before. The characters are all good. Sora, Riku, and Kairi, completely new. You know, Heartless are completely new as far as enemies go. And even, speaking of characters, there are Disney characters, there are Squaresoft characters. I mean, blended together pretty much perfectly. The amount of just perfection as far as the the elements of the crossover between Disney and Squaresoft, the fact that the Disney characters and the Squaresoft characters just meld or mesh, I guess, together so well, is probably what made this game as good as it is, because I can guarantee if it was awkward, it wouldn't have succeeded. But it is not awkward whatsoever. The music is just... I mean, listen to this track right here. I mean, it was the same track that was played at the beginning of the game. That, pretty much every tune of every world, I mean, just everything about the music is good. I'm not sure who the composer was. I guess I'll see in just a second here. But if it's Omatsu, I don't think it is. But if it is, whoever it is, it doesn't really matter, I guess. It's Whoever it is, it's really good. That's all I'm going to say. Now, I can't even think of whatever else graphically. I mean, graphically, it's a Squaresoft game on the PlayStation 2. It's really good. The cutscenes are really good. Just everything about the graphics are good. And I think that's just about everything I have to say about that. I believe we're going to be getting a cutscene coming up that is a hidden cutscene, I guess, that you only get if you beat the game on Expert and lock every world, or if you play on Normal and get everything in the game in the journal. So I'm going to let you guys just finish out the cutscenes here with the, the secret cutscene coming up and the rest of the credits, and I will see you guys in whatever Let's Play I decide to do next. Thank you for watching.
Rodrigo. We've got to find Riku and King Mickey. But uh, where do we start looking for that there door to the light? That's the king's seal. Hey, have you seen King Mickey? Oh, yep. Guys, let's go. If you guys stuck around this long, I would consider you guys true, true fans and viewers. After the game, if you beat it on Expert, you actually get to see a battle record, which, you know, gives you all this information. But as far as that cutscene, believe me, everybody, when they first saw that, they were like, Oh, what is that? What is all that? I don't think they even knew exactly what it all meant at that time, but it is pretty much all explained. But for the final time in this Let's Play, guys, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Keep that light shining bright, and I can't wait to see you guys back for whatever game I decide to do next.